I'm Nicholas Puran and this is my story. Goes all the way for six. He's a special talent. My earliest memories of cricket are playing cricket with my dad at the beach in front of our house and at the nets. I felt like I only knew cricket alone. School was there, but you know, all I could focus on and concentrate on is cricket. And that burning desire from a young age, you know, it made me realize that, you know, I'm here for cricket and that's it. And as far as I can remember, eight, nine, 10, 12, you know, all I kept telling my teachers, my parents, you know, I want to be a professional cricketer. Nicholas Puran, that's made him a standout player. 2014 on a 19 World Cup, definitely memorable for me. I set my goal of being one of the best batsmen in the tournament, if not getting emotions. I'm sitting back today and you know, reflecting on it, that's a memory that never dies. It feels good when you set goals and you know you almost achieve it or you did achieve it. It's just wonderful, you know, Roddy Essek was our coach there and he's a bowling coach here now. And you know, I've developed so much and you know, with him being there from 19, that makes it also more you know, special for me. But I did remember, you know, going back home from you know, Dubai. I remember watching the TVs at the airport and I was seeing myself celebrating. I was like, hey, it's a really a wonderful feeling. And you know, even when I came back home, you know, everyone was acknowledging it and you know. I wanted to do something special in that tournament and I was happy at the end of the day that I could have achieved that. I remember I was driving and Courtney Brown, you know, he called me and told me that I got selected and you know, I was really happy, you know, he called my parents and I let them know. That's something, I didn't expect it to be honest, you know, I had a really good CPL, but I was really young, I was just coming back from an accident as well. And I didn't thought I'd make Western team soon and you know, I was just really happy like this is what I've been working for for the last couple of years and it's happening now. I made my debut against Pakistan in Dubai. I was given my heart by Joel Ghana. It had a decent crowd in Dubai, but I remember you know, lining up, singing the national anthem. And when I was younger, every time West Indies cricket, you know, there's really you no know, interval. You always hear the West Indies anthem and that's something I always wanted to experience for myself. You know, lining up there, you know, seeing the West Indies flag fly. But it's a very special feeling for me, you know. I got a bit emotional and you know, I was starting to realize that you know, this is my dream. And as we always talk about, you know, memories last forever and these are the things that you know, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Huh? I don't want to take it for granted. My high point in my career, I think, is you know, definitely starting around 17 years, boosting onto the scene, playing for you know, Red Steel and the CPL, making 50 in my first game against Sunil Narayan. These guys, went, they're doing really good for themselves. I think you know, no one knew, knew me that time and you know, for me to you know, take that opportunity. You know, a lot of guys get opportunity, but we don't take it. You know, I'm very happy that I could sit here and say that I took my opportunity at 17 years. That was definitely the high point of my career there. Got the captains with me, Nicholas Puran of the West Indies, Aaron Finch of Australia. Nicholas Puran, first up, congratulations on being the 12th T20 international captain for the West Indies. I remember when Paulie got injured and he said, like, Poo, you know, I have to do this one here. I was like, sure, skipper, sure. I was like, okay, okay, fine, no problem. I know we had a lot of support from the senior players as well. You know, Bravo was there and he was my go-to man on the field. And I was really happy, you know. I felt like I got the respect of the other guys and, you know, that was really, you know, surprising to me as well. We all binding just to one aspect. I was very happy, you know. First of all, we wasn't really thinking about winning the series, but just getting better as individuals and as a group because we were building for the World Cup. And we sat and we discussed team plans, where we want to bowl the guys, how we want to approach the innings. And, you know, on the cricket field, we were so clear on what we have to do because there was a win factor and one side was bigger. So we were clear from the start. We stuck to our, our targets. Again, it was really surprising. We sat down and planned how exactly we want to play the game and we did that. And at the end of the day, we were victorious. And, you know, after the first game, we made 137 or something like that. And they were like 80 odd in 11 overs. We were on course to lose the game and we found a way to win the game. And I think from that game, everyone was just inspired and their confidence level just went up. Authority. Some serious authority. And you can hear the screams. What a victory in the match. What a victory in the series. And what a victory for Nicholas Puran. In two twos, we won the series. And then afterwards, you know, coach and these guys are saying, you know, we haven't beaten Australia in a series since you know how many years now. And, I was like, wow, Nicholas, this is a, you know, a wonderful achievement, not only for myself, but, you know, cricket West Indies. And again, something that I always treasure. Very, very pleasant, you know, it's fantastic. The way how the guys, 
you know, went out. Um, Nicholas getting his opportunity to lead, you know, West Indies team, you know, at age 25. You know, a group of, you know, senior guys and, you know, the way that he went out and he led, helped by the senior guys, I think was absolutely fantastic. It was a joy to watch. He's like a bigger brother to me. Sometimes a father figure as well, you know. He's not one to, you know, sit in a dressing room or sit around and listen to people talk nonsense. You know, even me, he tried his best to correct me as much as possible because I feel like he sees it as his responsibility as well. And I appreciate him for that. You know. We are young. He's someone who has played the game all over the world. And, you know, it's a really good opportunity for myself to learn as much as I can from him. He's a wonderful leader. He has second most amount of T20 runs in cricket. He has six sixes in the over as well. So, yeah, very influential for me. That's someone who I believe is very special. He's someone who saw my talent at a young age and gave me that opportunity when I was 17 years for Red Steel. And I remember he was like, pooh, just go out and express yourself. And fine, I was like, okay, cool, no problem. He's all ears, whenever you call him, he's there to give you advice. You know, he's someone I really appreciate. You know, the way he goes about his life as well, you know, he's definitely an inspiration to all. This is the kind of role models we want to be looking up to. Again, having him in my corner is a privilege and, you know, I really appreciate what he has done for me and you know, all the advice he has given me. My lowest point of my career, it's no secret anymore, it's my accident. I was 19 years when I thought you know, everything was going along you know, really smoothly for me. I hit a bump on the road and that was the end of that. You know, getting into an accident, damaging my patella tendon, fracturing my ankle, waking up in a hospital morning, seeing my legs in two casts as a 19 year old. It's something that you know, I don't wish on anyone. I don't want anyone to experience that. That was definitely hell. But it was my lowest point in my career and I've learned so much from it. So I could flip it and you know, look at it positively and say that that was one of my highest points in my career as well. It taught me a lot about life, it taught me a lot about myself. I remember sitting at home, I can't even walk, so I had to lie on the ground if I wanted to be comfortable as well. And I was watching cricket on TV and I was like, if I get this opportunity again. I know I just want to enjoy it as much as possible. Excellent hitting from Nicholas Puran. Nicholas Puran is a person that would do anything to make someone else happy. My passion is helping others. I love to see others do good. I feel like my purpose here is to play sports. So for me to send message across the world, I need to be true sports, true cricket. I love to you know, enjoy each other's success. I love to make other people happy as well. I love to be the person in a room who is the loudest, who talks the most, you know, even if other people is annoyed. But the biggest part for me is you know, just seeing people you know, being happy and wanting the best out of them, you know, helping others. I just feel like you know, I can be a voice. I feel like I inspire other people to achieve their full potential and I think I'm starting to understand now how to speak to different people differently now to help them you know, achieve the best because at the end of the day, I appreciate people who want the best for me. It doesn't matter who he is, you know, Nicholas Puran is there for you. And it doesn't matter if you reach out to me, I'm all ears. I try to drive my team with my voice, you know, my actions, my performances. I feel like no matter what is the situation of the game, we have a chance. If we come together and we play together and, you know, express our talent, our skills and our team plan. Because I know there's a lot of people who want to see me do good. I know there's a lot of people who's waking up in the morning watching Nicholas Puran bat, watching Cricket West Indies play. You know, sometimes you never know. If I don't feel someone might be vexed, might have a bad day, but if I perform, someone might have a good day. I remember that is how I used to be when Brian Lara used to perform, Chris Gale used to perform. That's how I, you know, I look at it now. Goes again, gets it again, even further this time from Nicholas Puran. If I wasn't a cricketer, as I said before, I had one dream, I wanted to play cricket. But if I can answer this question now, obviously my first answer would be cricketer, cricketer, cricketer. But to be honest, I wouldn't know what I'll be, to be honest. You know, it's, it's a tough time we live in now with this COVID. You know, a lot of people are you know, out of jobs, so maybe I would have been out of a job as well. So. Thank God for cricket. I definitely want to be known as one of the best batsmen the world has seen, or even in this generation. I want to achieve a lot of you know, success for West Indies cricket team as well. I want to try my best to break records. I want to see my name go down in history. As I said, I cherish memories. And I want to be sitting maybe in this chair 20, 50 years from now, saying that you know, Nicholas Purana did this for himself and for you know, the people who have supported him and his loved ones. Another T20 international half century 
for the West Indian wicketkeeper batsman and what a time to do it.